everybody. I'm Stacy. I'm her daughter, Mickey. And welcome to Katie Nomics. Yay! Woo-hoo. As everybody can see, we have a few special guests today. Look at that. We have some handsome boys with a very <laughs> handsome man. So we are going to introduce them in a second. But before we do, let me just do the usual and do some screen sharing to get into get into uh, Kittynomics. So Kittynomics, welcome everybody, welcome. I'd like to welcome all the new Kittynomics kitties that are on the webinar today. We had a whole bunch of new signups as usual. So we'd like to thank you for joining. And we'd like to also thank all of the returning Kittynomics kitties that are here week after week that have been learning their financial literacy skills and upping those, those skills as they get older into adulthood. They'll have a very strong foundation so, what is Kittynomics? Like, why are you here today? Like, why, why, why are you here every Friday at 11 a.m.? You're here because Kittynomics is here to help kids ages eight and older to develop a healthy relationship towards financial literacy, helping to start kids off on the right path to have a successful financial future. And that's what we want for you, right? Like we want for you guys to learn financial literacy skills. So as you get older, because you may not need them right now, right? Because you're super young. But as you get older, you will have these skills so that when you are older, you will make smart, educated, and healthy decisions for you that will positively affect you in the long run and have a very, very successful financial future. And that's what we want, right? Right. All right. So housekeeping items. Right. First, I'd like to say um, just on a, I'm sorry, but just on a serious note. So we do have a lot of kitty noms, kitties that have been on here week after week, and we do not see you in the chat box. Right. So you can only communicate. We can you can only communicate in the chat box. We can't see or hear you. So you can communicate through the chat box, of course, to ask any questions that you have. So if you do have a question, please raise your hand if you like, and then ask the question in the chat box below so we can read out what the question is to our expert. Um, But please do not really communicate with other kitties, especially we um, we had a great webinar a few weeks ago, right? Talking about online money smarts. And we spoke about how to be smart online and never give away any personal information, anything like that. So please make sure, even if you feel like this is a friend and you know them, please don't give out any personal information because you wanna make sure that everybody is, is safe on the platform because that's what we want for you, all right? So please keep in mind, as I said, that uh, if you have any questions, please type it in the chat box, but If you can limit your conversations in the chat box, that would be amazing. It's there to ask your questions and so that I can read it through to make sure that we're answering all of your questions that you do ask, right? Also, please also have your pen and your and your book ready to write down all the information that you have, right? And ask any questions so that we can ask it later, but have a book and pen ready. And also keep in mind, Kittynomics is recorded every single time. Every single Friday, it is a recorded session. And we do post the recording of the video on our YouTube channel, Kittynomics, by 3 p.m. on every Friday. Okay? So don't forget that. So in case we do miss a question or we didn't, you maybe didn't hear something clearly, please remember that you can always watch back the videos and all of our past videos on our Kittynomics YouTube channel, so you can watch them at your own convenience and time when you are um, available to do so. So that's enough of all of our housekeeping items today. What are we talking about today? We are talking about public speaking. And I am like super excited, and so is Mickey, because she said, Mommy, I need this lesson. (laughs) Right? That's what you said. We're going to talk about public speaking for kids. And that's why we have the incomparable Jeff Martin. He is a speaker, he is an author, and he is a coach. So Jeff Martin is a soul-steering, thought-provoking, highly requested transformational speaker who has been using his platform to inspire people from around the world. 
Much of Jeff's love for people can be attributed to his years of involvement as a community advocate, a mentor, and also his 15 plus years of experience in law enforcement. Jeff has worked as a police officer and in various investigative roles. He is a youth communication specialist with over 1,000 forensic interviews, oh my gosh, with children. Jeff is also an author of two critically acclaimed books, a City of Toronto best-selling children's book, um, children's book, Brothers from the Six, Sisters from the Six, Role Models in My Community, and, and an Amazon best-selling personal development book, New Me, 10 Men, 10 Stories of Perseverance. This is amazing. I'm so, like, this is so amazing. Jeff is an award-winning professional speaker, a certified coach, University of Harvard University certificate recipient for public speaking, and the creator of Inspire Legacy Company Online Academy, where he teaches the art of public speaking and student character development. With his career and life experiences coupled with his Bolivians and passion in Inspire, Jeff Martin it, it shares his gift of purpose in efforts to help others find their true potential. Like, this is amazing. Like, Jeff, I'm so excited to have you on. So everybody, give a round of applause and kittynomics. Welcome to Jeff. And then Jeff is going to introduce those two handsome boys that are with him today. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. There he is. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stacey. And thank you, Mickey. I'm so happy to be here, a part of your Kittynomics group, um, your, your community here. And I have a couple of guys here who want to introduce themselves. We'll start with you over here. My name, nice and loud. My name is Jeffrey, and I'm 11 years old. All right. And you, nice and loud. My name is Tonkin, I'm 7 years old. All right. These Hi. are two <laughs> These are my two sons, and I am Jeff A.D. Martin, and I am years old, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I will not share that piece. However, I will share my screen. And yes, please do. Get this party started. So today we're going to speak about public speaking and the importance of learning public speaking. I think it's so important that no yes, matter how- Yes, your, 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 your audio was cutting out there. Can you say that again? It was cutting out a little bit. Yeah, do you have me now? Does it sound better? Yes, that's much better. All right, perfect. I think it's really important that we learn public speaking because it gives us an opportunity to share our voice, our ideas, our thoughts with the world. And it gives us an opportunity to share in a way that's very sharp and precise, that people can really understand the things that we're trying to, to share. So learning the art of public speaking, I think, is, is super important. I'm going to get my son, Jeffrey, to read this first one. What does it say? What is public speaking? What is public speaking? Well, public speaking is, it is a presentation that's given live in front of an audience. So if you've ever been to a church or a mosque um, or anywhere of worship and the person is standing on stage and they're speaking to the crowd, they are doing public speaking. At your school, if you've been in a, an assembly and maybe the principal's on stage or a teacher's on stage and they're sharing their thoughts about something, that there is also public speaking. You might have heard of Martin Luther King or Nelson Mandela or Malala Yousafzai, some of these people who've done amazing things in the world, and you might have heard some of their speeches. That too is also public speaking. Public speaking is exactly what it says here, presenting in front of a live audience. And there's a lot of people actually who are professional public speakers who actually get paid to, to speak in front, of a, in front of a crowd and share their thoughts. Now, the question is, Jeffrey, do you want to read that one? Why is it important for students to learn speaking? Why is it important for students to learn speaking? I think it's so important because, again, you can share your ideas and your thoughts. So the first one says, what does it say, Jeffrey? Build confidence. Build confidence. You can build your confidence when you can stand on stage and share your thoughts. Some of us are shy. Some of us are a little bit timid. But if we're able to speak in front of maybe one person, maybe two people, you get better and better. And that it goes from two people to 10 people, and then maybe 20 people, you start to build your confidence. And you're able to speak that much more with that confidence that you have now built. Also, I believe it helps you to overcome fears. 
did you know that the number one fear, they've done studies, and the number one fear that people have is public speaking. In fact, the number two fear is dying. So people would rather die than to be a public speaker, which is kind of crazy, right? But that's what the truth is, is that people have a fear of public speaking. If you are able to, again, if you can put together a speech and speak it in front of your parents, your family, maybe your classmates, and then the crowd starts to grow, you speak in front of a larger crowd, again, it helps you to overcome the fears that you might have. Also, why is it important to learn uh, speaking, public speaking? It helps to improve your communication skills. Public speaking is exactly that. You're communicating to the audience. You're sharing your ideas and your thoughts with an audience. And sometimes, you know, when we're, when we're communicating, we, we speak, of course, so we're telling somebody our thoughts. But when we're also speaking, we speak with our body as well. As you can tell, I'm using my hands here. So I'm trying to show you uh, what I'm talking about. So it's a part of the communication. And when you learn public speaking, you learn about the speaking piece, you learn about the faces you make and how you could use that to help to share your story. And you, you, you also learn how to use your hands and your body to also share your story as well. Let's keep going. I think it's important. Uh, another reason why it's important to uh, learn public speaking is that it helps to increase your organizational skills. Because when you create a speech, you have to have a beginning, you have to have a middle, and you have to have an end. And it all has to flow and make sense. So it helps to organize the thoughts that you have and put your story together to really flow and help to sell it to the audience. Also, lastly, it helps you to become a better researcher. You get better research skills. Because again, when, you are, uh, when you're looking into a topic that you're going to speak about, you have to do some research. You have to do some digging and understanding about that speech you're gonna talk about. And so, yeah, you know, it helps you to research better and understand things better, whether it be going online and Googling something and, and really figuring out about, about that topic. It gives you the opportunity to do that. So learning public speaking gives you an opportunity to do all these things and more. All right, let's keep going. Hold on one second, Mr. Jeff. Yeah. Ask the kids online. Um, so who, there, who online has ever had a fear of public speaking and why? Why? Why, Mickey, do you, are you on, maybe not fear, but uncomfortable with public speaking? Because sometimes I feel like people will think bad about me. Oh my gosh, this, this girl's presentation is so bad and stuff. So I'm, I'm always scared to present in front of people. But I, I, I don't, like I'm not comfortable being around in the crowd. So she fears the, the, the critical aspect of public speaking, that people are going to criticize her. Does anybody else have that fear? Let's see what else everybody else says online. So Koi says, I have a fear of public speaking. Maya says, I'm scared if I mess up. But we all mess up. <laughs> all mess up, absolutely. Joel says, sometimes I think I will mess up a word. And then Renata says, people are staring at me. Yes, I know. <laughs> Olivia says, I have because I feel like I mess up. Catherine says, I'm not afraid of public speaking. I do it all the time. I love it. What? Go, Catherine. I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. Good job. Yeah, well, you know what? I think we all have had this, you know, this, this concern and worry, right, about what do people think about me when I am speaking? And that may yeah. hold you back, right, from, uh, from articulating your thoughts and how you feel about something. So this is a great reason why we have Jeff on today, so we can help overcome these, these fears, right? Yeah. Sorry, Jeff, go ahead. Absolutely. No, that's okay, absolutely. And you know what, at the end, I'm gonna speak about that. The people who are a little bit nervous, who are a little bit scared, I'm hoping I can encourage you to be um, the best public speaker you can be because your voice matters. I'm gonna talk about that at the end. So yeah, that, that's very important that you brought those points up. I'm glad that everyone who's listening is able to really share their, their true feelings about it. That's awesome. So Mustafa also says, I love public speak, sorry, I love public speaking sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that three times fast. I love yes. public speaking. Last year, I joined a school debate 
at, about borders. Wow, good for you. Good job. That's awesome. Yeah. She can't even speak in front of one person. Oh, Miki says she can't speak in front of one. Well, she does all the time to her mom. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine so. These guys too. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Uh, Chauncey, do you want to read this one? Well, what do I talk about? Well, what do I talk about? When we're talking about public speaking, what do I talk about? What ideas can I put together? And you might have, for example, if you're uh, doing a presentation at school, your teacher might ask you to uh, come up with a topic. Maybe the topic's basketball, maybe it's sports, maybe it's being strong, whatever it might be. But while you're giving your speech, I think it's important to share some of your story in terms of who you are. So what do I talk about? I think we talk about our gems. You're like, gems? What are gems? Gems is something that I say is your journey's exceptional moments. What does that mean exactly? All of us are on a journey, our life. Every day we go to sleep, we wake up, we're lucky to wake up and we experience different things. So some of you might have a puppy at home and you know what it's like to have a brand new puppy trying to train it, it's crying, it's, you know, it's it's because it's brand new into your house. And so that's an experience that you can speak about that maybe other people can't speak about. Maybe you have an older dog and maybe because it's older, maybe it passed away. Again, that's an experience that you can speak about. If there's a brand new baby in your home and your baby's keeping you up at night, again, something that you can speak about. It's a part of your exceptional moments in life. The fact that we have all lived through COVID-19 and we're trying to figure out what school's gonna look like. You know, a lot of people uh, were canceled from going from school at the end of the school year and now school's about to start. We don't know what that's gonna look like. This is something that you are living through. Again, your journey's exceptional moments. It gives you an opportunity to share the things that you are going through in your life. And because it's your life, you understand it. You are the one that's able to share it and give the best perspective of that situation because it's something that you've lived through. Does that make sense, Stacey? It does. So Catherine says online, um, something that is relevant to you. And that's a very good way to sum it up, Catherine. Good job. Absolutely, Catherine. You're absolutely now right. I will get to your question. What if I lose your train of thought? So I'm sure Mr. Jeff will answer that question as he goes along. Absolutely. We'll talk about that for sure. For sure. Awesome. All right. So when picking your topic, you should be. Now, these are the three A's that I believe when you're picking your topic, things that you should consider. The first one, Chauncey, can you say that one? Mm. Aware. So I think you should be very aware of your topic, meaning that if you're going to speak about, for example, basketball, then you should do lots of research and be very aware. You should know who the top scorers are. You should know who won the most championships. You should know um, where the teams are playing. You should know a lot of stuff about basketball or whatever topic it might be because you want to be extremely aware of that topic. All right. You also want to be authentic. Authentic means you want to be true to the topic. So if you're going to talk about a dog, if you had a dog and the dog maybe died because it was older, if that never happened to you, then maybe not, that's not the topic you want to speak about or the story you want to share. But if you did live through something like that, then you've experienced it. So you are authentic to that, 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 um, that topic. So that may be something you can use. So you really want to be true and authentic to the topic that you're gonna speak about, you can ex you experience something in that area and it helps you to really speak about that. And lastly, the last A, JJ, what's that one say? Audacious. Audacious. Does anybody know what audacious means? Let's ask the kids online. Does anybody yeah. know what audacious means? You know, Mickey? Hmm, I'm not sure. <laughs> she said, no, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, Koi says, no. Olivia, all the kids say no. Sue Lee says no, no. Joel says no. Maya <laughs> says nope. <laughs> all I right. Well, say, Mustafa says, I really like this subject because I want to be a lawyer. I love that. That's Good awesome. That's JW fantastic. says no. Renata, uh, is, public, is public speaking, is the fear of public speaking an actual phobia? Let's get into that. I'm sure Mr. Jeff will, will answer that question. Um, so most of the kids all say no, uh, except one person says, Brianna says showing respect. 
So um, a little bit close, I would say. Audacious, well, this is great that nobody knows what it means because it's a, an opportunity for you to learn a new word today, all right? Audacious means to be bold. It means to be bold. When you speak about something, I want you to be bold about it. I don't want you to be soft and say, you know, I think that basketball is a good sport. I want you to say, basketball is an amazing sport. I want you to be bold and brave about the topic that you choose. Because when you're bold and brave about it and authentic, it helps to, to sell it to your audience. It helps your audience to really understand how, how strong you feel about it. And when you are able to give them that level of energy and that authenticness, it helps to, to, for them to understand, okay, this is something I really should be paying attention to. So yes, be, aud be aware, be authentic, and be audacious. Audacious. Absolutely. Audacious. So the J and H brothers say yes. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. So a question that people ask is, how do I start? How do I start a speech? What is the best way to start a speech? And there are a number of ways that you can choose to start a speech. There's so many things you could choose from. But for me, in, in my public speaking, there are maybe three things that I use. And I'm going to share two of them today that I think are very strong. And it'll help you to start your speech in a great manner where people are really going to start paying attention. So the first one is, what does that say? Louder. In, in your in your public speaking voice <laughs> louder bold statements statement. i want you to be able to use one of the things you can use is a bold statement and what does that mean so i'll give you an example if we're talking about basketball again um you could say something along you could say something along the lines of i believe that when i make it to the nba i'm going to be a better basketball player than lebron james what yes Woo! That's, that's a bold statement. That's a bold statement. Absolutely <laughs> bold statement. Another example of a bold statement is when I play professional basketball, I'm going to use my platform to make a difference in this world. That's another bold statement. That's because a bold people, statement. Absolutely. Because people who are listening are going to think, whoa, number one, they're going to make it to professional basketball. And number two, they're going to make a state. They're going to do something in this world. I wonder what they're going to do. That's amazing. Yeah, go ahead, Stacey. So let's ask the kids, what type of bold statement could they make if they were going to start a topic on public speaking? What do you think? What bold statement, Mickey, would you, would you say? I don't know. Uh, I would say that we need to keep to work harder. You're going to work more harder? Okay. Okay. What about, like, what about saying, you always used to say that I'm going to be better than Serena, Serena Williams in tennis. Woo! See, and she says, because that's going to happen. <laughs> I love that. Ooh, I love that on so many levels. That's she awesome. Says, <laughs> Olivia says, I would start with my opinion. Yes, very what good. Else, what else is a bold statement that somebody would make? I like Mufasa's statement. He says that he's going to be a lawyer. So he's yes. going to be what? You'd be like the best lawyer Ever, right? Um, Suli says people can make a world where, where, with, with their words. Yes, you can. You can make the world a better place with your words, right? Absolutely, That's you can. Very important. Great place to start. Yes. So J and H brother says something about the NBA. Oh, are you guys? Is, is your statement going to be like I'm going to play in the NBA? That's a good one. Koi says I'm going to be a basketball player. I love that. You got to oh. state what you want to do, right? We're going to state our claim, right? That's really important. I'm going to be the next Zadea. Oh, I love that. Good job. Good That's job. big. That's big. <laughs> right? Nice. But you're going to be the next you, I would yes, say. Yes, absolutely. You're going to be the next big you, right? Awesome. Good job, everybody. Good job. All right. Fabulous. I love Good. that. That's good. So those are some bold statements that we just got there. That's, that's fabulous. Another great way to start a speech is a thought-provoking question. A thought-provoking question. Again, I, I've mentioned basketball, so let's kind of stay in that area. If you say something along the lines of, do you know that a professional basketball player, the average span of their playing career is only four and a half years? What? 
you're going to be like, wow, I didn't know that. You know, there's a lot of players I know that play for longer than that. I didn't know that the average is four and a half years. Again, a thought-provoking question. So I'd love to hear from you guys, a thought-provoking question that you think it's, it, that would help to get your speech going. What do you think? Well, okay, so Maya was making a bold statement. She says, I'm going to be an interior designer. Yes, Maya, maybe okay. one day you can help interior design our house. That would be amazing. <laughs> what do you think? Um, what, what would be a thought-provoking question? She has to think. Does anybody okay. else have a thought-provoking question? Mr. Little. Jeff, how about you give us an example and the kids will probably chime in after that. Yeah, absolutely. So if you say something along the lines of, did you know that drinking milk for 20 years will actually uh, have you living for 20 years longer? Now, I don't know if that's actually true, but again, a question that's going to have you saying, whoa, wow. And of course, you want to do your research to make sure it is correct. But yes, a thought-provoking question is something that's going to have your audience saying, whoa i didn't know that that's interesting so Mufa, uh, mustafa says that did you know that lawyers work 13 hours a day there you go that's a thought-provoking question that's a thought-provoking question absolutely it is again Good it has job. your thinking suli, suli says did you know some people change the world that made this world better only with their words yes that's a thought-provoking question i love that that's awesome Catherine says, when you apply for a TV show, if you make it and are really good, you have an odd, uh, you have, you have to audition up to three times to get the part. So you have to like really want it, I guess. Right? Right? I was like, That's yeah. That's a thought-provoking question to think, okay, well, do I really want to be an actor or an actress? Right? Absolutely. These are all <laughs> great thought-provoking questions. Did you know that Tennis and and LeBron James and Kobe Bryant and all the NBA players and tennis players, they work extra hard every single day and they practice every single day. So she says, did you know that all of these athletes like Serena Williams and LeBron James and Kobe, who's like her favorite player, she loved Kobe. Everything in this house is when she shoots a shot, it's like, Kobe! <laughs> um, and my daughter now, the two-year-old or three-year-old, everything that she does is Kobe. Yeah, um, you guys too. Uh, she's saying, did you know that they have to practice every single day and put in a lot of hours, right? So that's a thought-provoking yes. question to know that whether or not you want to really, really do that sport, right? Yes, RIP Kobe, we, we loved Kobe. Um, did you know, so Joel says, did you know that soccer was first called football. Yeah. Well, it depends on which island you come from. <laughs> so we're from the Caribbean, and in the Caribbean, it's still called football. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And those are all great thought-provoking questions. I, I love, Mickey, that was a great one, too. That, that's awesome. Um, and again, you know, starting your speech, you want to be able to say something that's really going to grasp your audience's attention. Right now, if you go on stage, and you start your speech by saying, hello, my name is Jeff, and today I'm going to speak to you about basketball. Your audience is going to be like, okay, and you might have somebody looking at you like this. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see if we can all make that face. <laughs> I'm sure that somebody's probably screenshotted that. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably. Now, of course, you know, you can start your speech any way you want to. However, if I go and say, my name is Jeff, and today I'm going to talk about basketball. If you are a tennis fan, if you are a football fan, if you are a rugby fan, you're going to be like, I don't want to hear about basketball for the next 20 minutes or however long the speech is. So you might start tuning out. You might start playing with your cell phone. You might start looking up at the sky and not paying attention. But if you are that person on the stage giving that speech and you start with a strong statement, I'm gonna be the best player to ever play, even better than LeBron James, even that rugby fan or that tennis fan is gonna be like, whoa, who is this person speaking? Are they, are they serious? And again, it's gonna grab their attention. Go ahead, Stacy. So we have a question online from uh, uh, Saba. She says, can you start off with a, a question or a statement instead, instead of, saying this is what I'm going to be speaking about, she's asking, or he's asking, 
Can you start with a question or a statement? Absolutely, and I think that's the best way to start with a bold statement, with a question that's gonna have people thinking. And then later on, you could say your name within your speech and say what you're speaking about. But to start your speech, I think that is the exact same way. Yes, you start exactly that way by uh, giving that statement or that question. Mm. That's yeah. Good. Mus uh, Mustafa says that when, uh, when I started my debate, um, I guess he's saying he started his debate with a fact and a definition. Can we Very good. A fact and a definition to start off your speech. Yes, that is also a great way to start your speech. Sometimes people use quotes. They might say Martin Luther King once said, and then they give a, a quote from Martin Luther King or somebody. Mm -hmm. That's also a great way to start the speech because it grabs people's attention. Right. So it's all about grabbing their attention because your speech is going to go on if it's 50 minutes, you know, maybe for adults, it's an hour, sometimes an hour and a half. You're going to have to grab their attention for a long, long time. So saying that, you want to start strong, give them something that they're going to grasp onto, and then they're going to hold on to you. They're going to be at the edge of your seat during the entire speech because you got them right at the beginning. All right, so let's keep going. How do I end my speech? I think it's important that we end our speech with a call to action. And what that means is, what do you want your audience to do? At the end of your speech, what are you looking for them to get from your speech? What are they going to learn from your speech? So, for example, if you're talking about the environment, maybe at the end of your speech, you want to encourage them to go out and to pick up garbage when they see it on the street. Maybe you want to encourage people not to litter. Maybe you want to encourage people, if you're talking about animals, you want to encourage them not to leave food out in the forest. You know, whatever it is, but I think it's important that at the end of your speech, whatever your speech is about, if again, going back to basketball, if it's about basketball, maybe you want to encourage people to actually start watching the sport or getting physical, um, taking care of their physical body and playing the sport. There's a lot of things that you can do. However, with a call to action, giving your audience something that you want them to do, I think it's very important because you had their attention for, again, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, however long your speech is. And at the end, you're giving them an idea of what you're hoping they'll do at the end of your speech. Mm. All right. Okay. So we'll keep going. Shanti, you're still with me? What does that say? Tricks you can use. A little louder. Tricks you can use. Tricks you can use. Now, when you are doing public speaking, there's a couple of tricks, or there's a lot of tricks that you can use that, again, will help your audience to be attentive, to pay attention to your speech. And here are a few of them I want to share with you. The first one is, lots Jeffrey, of description. lots and lots and lots of description. I'll give you two examples. Example number one, I left my house, I walked to the store, and I bought ice cream. That's example number one. Example number two is, as soon as I opened the front door of my house and stepped outside, the sun punched me in the face, it was so hot. As I walked down the street, I felt the sweat coming down my face. Every step I took, it got hotter and hotter, and I couldn't wait to get to that store because I had to get something cold in my body. As soon as I got to the store, I opened up the door, and the air condition felt like a wave coming over me. It felt so good, it was nice and cold. I finally ran into the store, I grabbed the ice cream cone, and I started eating it, and before I even recognized, I didn't even pay for it yet, right? Two different ways to say the exact same thing. The whole idea is to give description because it allows someone to actually visualize everything you're saying. So when I gave the second portion and I'm talking about how the sun is coming down and you could feel the sweat coming down your face, you start to be like, oh yeah, I, I can feel that. And you can feel the sun and then you go to the store, you open up the door, you feel the air condition come over you like a wave. And you're like, oh yeah, I, I felt that before too. And it helps you to describe it to the audience so they can put themselves right in the scene. It's almost like they are with you during that whole thing. So you really wanna give lots of description when you're giving your speech. That's a really good one, Mr. Jeff. I think, um, especially with Mickey sometimes when she's doing a report or something, it's very um, like, yes, it's short, right? Like. It was the first example, I went to the store. Yes. Right, instead of the second part of your description where there was like a whole bunch more detail. You see, see what I'm telling you? you? There's a whole bunch more detail as to why you went to the store and how you felt when you went to the store. So it draws people in 
Yeah. So you hear more about like why you went to the store in the first place. Absolutely. Absolutely. Description is going to have everybody really visualizing in their mind, using their imagination of what that feeling felt like. When you say, you know, I heard the car coming down the street. I felt the air, it, the warm air coming over my face. People can feel it. People can hear it. And so it has them really buying into your story. Again, that's a great trick that you can use to help to sell your story. Another one is changing up your voice. So changing your voice up is, let me give you an example. If you're saying, you know, I was in school one day and the teacher came over to me and said, little Jeffrey, you're not paying attention in class, <laughs> right? So I used a voice there that sounded like my teacher, right? So I changed up my regular voice to the teacher voice. Or if you're telling a story and you say, that day when that thing happened, it made me so mad. Right? So again, the way I did it there, it showed that I was mad. Or if I said, my mother came along and she tucked me in bed and she whispered in my ear, I love you, little Jeffrey. <laughs> right? Same idea. I whispered it there. I said it quietly. So you can see, you can imagine being in that situation. So again, it's about, it's about changing up your voice to add character, to add um, another emphasis to your speech, which is a great opportunity for you to do that. Yeah. So a lot of times uh, there could be the importance of changing up your voice also makes people, is this right? Like makes people want to listen to you more. So for example, yes. every Kittynomics we say, like we say, my name is Stacy, and Mickey introduced yourself, and we say, Welcome to Katie Nomad. Yeah. yeah. Suppose we did it like, My name is Stacy, this is Mickey, welcome to Kitty Nomics. Which exactly. one do you guys want to join and watch for the rest of the session? The first one, welcome to Kitty Nomics. Or welcome to Kitty Nomics. Exactly. So let's see, what do the kids say online? Mustafa says the first one. <laughs> Suli says, my eardrums hurt now. <laughs> and turn it down a little bit. <laughs> turn down the volume. <laughs> uh, Maya says the first one. Suli says the first one, right? You guys would be more engaged. Joel says the first one. Uh, Olivia says the first one. Yay, right? Because we'd awesome. be more engaged to watch Kittynomics if I didn't sound so monotone like. Exactly. Exactly. You guys today, right? Yes. Exactly. The happy one says Catherine. Good job. Saba, she says the first one. Good job. Good job, everybody. Sorry, go ahead, Mr. Jeff. No, that's, that's not a problem. So you're absolutely right. Changing up your voice brings character to your story and it helps people to listen more. Again, you want people to be on the edge of their seat, grasping at every word because of all the tricks that you can throw into your speech to make it better. Now, I think it's so important that you bring the energy, right? So as Miss Stacy just talked about, when they say kidonomics, that's bringing the energy. And all of a sudden, if you had an audience who was quiet, maybe they were half asleep, and then you came with the energy, I think you have a reaction like my little guy right here, right? Whoa, that's amazing, right? <laughs> you want to be able to bring that energy because let's be real, if the audience is sitting quietly and you come in and just like as Miss Stacy just said, welcome to Kidonomics. My name is Jeff and I'm gonna talk to you today about this topic that might bore you and put you to sleep, right? You're probably gonna go to sleep start playing with your cell phone or something like that. But if I bring the energy, I bring the feeling, I make you feel excited, yes. then you're gonna be like, wow. And just like my, my little kid here, you're gonna be like, woo, your eyes are gonna open. You're gonna be like, wow, I, this is amazing. I gotta pay attention. Yes. So yes, you want to bring the energy each and every time. The energy doesn't come from the audience. The energy comes from you. And lastly, one of the tricks that you can use is practicing. Practice, 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 practice. You always want to practice. Consider one of your favorite songs, whatever your song, the favorite song might be. That artist, the person who wrote the song, they probably sang it a thousand times before they actually recorded it. 
they recorded it, they put it out there, it's played on the radio, and now when they're touring the world and they're, 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 they're doing concerts, they sing it another thousand times. And they know the song so well because they practice it over and over again. It's the same thing like your speech. You want to be able to practice it so you know it inside and out. You're able to really understand what areas you can add uh, different voices. You can add lots of description. You can add jokes into your speech, which people love because it keeps them engaged and laughing. And again, it's just all about practicing and getting better with speaking. All right. The kids say practice makes perfect, a perfect Good job, Olivia. Olivia says, practice makes perfect. Suli says, yeah, practice makes perfect speech. Good job. Absolutely, it does. Brothers have smiley faces because they like what they're hearing. Good job. <laughs> I love that. Job. Perfect. That is fantastic. And so this last thing I want to share with you is thinking on your feet. And we're going to play a little game. And Mickey, I'm hoping you can play along as well, all right? And I have a question for you, but I'll let you know when it comes. So thinking on your feet basically is being able to think quickly. So at some point in time, some of you are going to be looking for a job. And when you're doing a job interview and somebody's asking you questions, you have to be able to think and answer fairly quickly. Right. If your teacher asks you a question, you put your hand up, you have to answer fairly quickly. Thinking on your feet is exactly that. You want to be able to come up with ideas and stories pretty much fairly quickly. And doing this a game, it really helps your imagination to really keep moving. And I know with kids, you have a great imagination already. With some adults, they don't have any imagination anymore. And so this is a great game even for adults to play as well to get the imagination going. And it really is just asking almost like a silly question and coming up with a silly answer. And being able to do that, you're going to be speaking for a while. So not just giving a one word answer, but speaking for maybe 10 seconds, 20 seconds about the silly answer that you give. Whether the answer is right or wrong, it's all about using your imagination and continuing to talk. And this, this game here helps you with public speaking. So I have three questions here. Uh, one of them is going to be answered by uh, Chauncey. One's going to be answered by Jeffrey. And the last one is going to be answered by my friend, Mickey. All right. So, Mickey, I'll let you know when yours is coming. All right. So the first question belongs to who? Chauncey. To Chauncey. All right. So, Chauncey, make sure you're in the camera here. All right. And you got to speak loud in your public speaking voice. Okay. So the first question is, tell me why you named your cat Dog. Why do you name your cat dog? Again, a very silly question, but the whole idea is to get you speaking, to get you answering right away, and not just to give a one word answer, but I want you to speak for maybe, you know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. You know, if you get really good at this, you can speak for even for a minute if you can on this, this uh, question here. So Chauncey, tell me why you named your cat dog loudly. It looks like a dog and the dog- Louder. The dog would eat cat. Louder, you gotta speak louder. The cat eats dog food, and so then it um, turned into a dog, and it looked like a cat, so I named it dog. Okay, all right. I don't know if you can hear him there. He's speaking a little quiet, but he gave his answer of, of why he named his cat dog. Again, a very silly question, but the whole idea is to keep you talking, right? So you can play this game with, with siblings, with friends, with your parents, with whoever, and just ask silly questions. You can use questions or you can even use words. Like for example, um, even me as a professional uh, speaker, some things that I do when I'm driving down the street just to make sure I stay sharp with speaking, I'll see a, a stop sign go by or I'll look around the car and I'll see like a, a water bottle and I'll maybe give a speech, I'll say a speech and I'll use the word water bottle in my speech or I'll speak about a water bottle for about a minute. So these are things that you can do to help your public speaking to become better. So the second question, Jeffrey, you're gonna answer this one. So again, in your public speaking voice, all right, come on in so we can see you. Jeffrey, why do you brush your teeth with milk instead of water? Again, he, he doesn't do that, but again, it's just a silly question. Why do you brush your teeth with milk instead of water? Because uh, like spicy stuff, like the, if you have mint toothpaste, it makes your mouth like feel mint. It's like spicy stuff, you drink milk instead of water like when you spicy stuff, so that's why I use milk. And also because I can drink it instead of spitting it out and wasting, wasting the toothpaste and doing nothing with like it. And also, you know, it also, it looks cool when you do it. Okay. 
So I don't know if you could hear all that, but Chauncey was like, ew, that's, that's, that's weird. But again, it's, it's, it's about having fun. It, it really is about having fun and using your skills to use your imagination. Just keep talking. Just keep going with your, your answer. And, 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 you know, again, it helps you with that public speaking piece. All right. So Mickey, I have a question for you. Are you ready? Yeah. I said, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's go. Mickey, the question for you is, do you think it would be cool to have a pet elephant at home? And I want you to speak for about 15 to 20 seconds if you can. Uh, yeah, because Ben asked me when, when um, it breaks the whole entire house down, she has to learn how to fix it and not me because I play Minecraft. So she has to learn how to fix it. And then after, I can just sit there and watch her fix it the whole time you're playing Minecraft. Then just build another version of it, then go in the game and then live my life there until she's been fixing the house and closing all the doors. Did you hear her? So she said she would like to have an elephant so that the elephant will break down the house and then I have to learn how to fix the house while she sits there and plays Minecraft and oh. she'll build a house in Minecraft and that will be her house, but I have to learn how to build back the house that the elephant broke down and that would be phenomenal for her. Well, all right. <laughs> Round of applause. Mickey, that was awesome. I love that. I love that. And again, it's just a great opportunity to, number one, have some fun and, you know, again, just continue to speak. Now, for some of you who are younger, you might have at one point in time which in school had flashcards and the flashcards had words on it like red, yellow, bike, and it helps you to read. Those flashcards are awesome. Even though you might know how to read now, those flashcards are awesome because you can show a flashcard and it might say yellow. And now you have to tell a story about something that's yellow. You, have, you can tell a story about anything and use the word yellow in it, however you wanna play it. But it's a great opportunity to really use the skills of your imagination and again, keep talking. When you keep talking, it helps you to create those stories and even as silly as they are, it helps you to become a better speaker. So when you do uh, do public speaking on a stage, you become more proficient. You become uh, better at it. You become sharper with your skills so you can be uh, able to sell your story and share a great story while on stage. Good job. Let's see what the uh, panel, what our kids say online. Um, any questions, anybody so far? Mm -hmm. Any questions from anybody? Were these great examples of thinking on your feet? Because I remember somebody asking, well, what happens if I don't know what to say or I, I can't think of anything? Catherine says, you are a good speaker. Will it make you a better writer? If you are, sorry, if you are a good speaker, will it make you a better writer? Good question, Catherine. That's an awesome That's question. That is a fantastic question. I believe it will, because again, it's all about using your imagination and telling stories, telling uh, things from your gems, your journeys, exceptional moments. And the same way how you speak those stories, you can write those stories as well. So I believe it makes you a greater writer as well. Awesome. All right. So the last thing that I want to share is, is that I really want you to understand that your voice matters. Now, I can't hear you, but I need you to repeat after me. I can hear Mickey. I want you to repeat after me. My voice matters. My voice matters. Come everybody on. Has, everybody has to type it. People should type it in. There we go. Suli, my voice matters. That's Absolutely. right. My. Type that in. I want you to say it again my with conviction. Matters. Catherine, my voice matters. Jolata, my voice matters. Dominique, Brianna, my voice matters. Good job. Good Absolutely. Job. Say it like you mean it. My voice matters. My voice matters. Absolutely. You really need to know that your voice matters. You were born, you were brought here on this earth, and you had the ability to speak. You have the ability to communicate. And for even f with some of those few people who might not be able to speak, we also have the ability to communicate. So that's, I believe that's a part of your voice as well. When you speak and you use your hands, it's a part of your voice, meaning it's a part of your communication. And all of us have the ability to share our voice. And the great thing is that all of us have an imagination, all of us have dreams, all of us have goals, all of us have things that we want to go after in this world. And I think it's important that we do because the ideas that we have, some people might think it's silly. Some people might think it's not a good idea, but you never know that idea can be that thing that changes somebody else's life. 
The idea could be something that you can come up with the cure to some type of disease. With your ideas and your thinking, you can come up with a way to help to solve world hunger, to help to feed people who are homeless because of your ideas. So it's important that your ideas, you voice them, you put them out into the world. Or like my friend talked about, you write about them. But your ideas, the things that come out of you, they matter. Your voice matters. You were given that voice for a reason. And so it's important that we use that voice. And when we use it and are able to sharpen our skills and use it as a public speaker, then people are going to listen. So no matter what you do in this world, no matter what you're trying to attain, no matter what you're going after, it's important that you remember that you were born with a voice and your ideas that you have in your head, you put them out into this world because that's going to make this world better. Oh my God, that was <laughs> phenomenal. That's why we needed this today. This was amazing. <laughs> All the kids online have said their voice matters. There's so many of them Ooh. that have raised their, raised their voices by writing it and saying that their voice matters. Thank you. Is there any other Absolutely. questions online from any of the kids? Is there any questions online from any of the kids? Let me see. Questions, questions, questions. No. Okay. Well, Thank you, Mr. Jeff. That was absolutely amazing, right? Thank you, Miss Stacy. Thank you, little Mickey. I appreciate you and, and allow us to be on here. You guys say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm going to wrap up. You guys stay on, but I'm going to wrap up uh, and do our closing stuff as we usually do. So hold on. Let me share back my screen. Next slide. So final question that we always ask every single week. What would happen if kids became more financially literate? And our answer is real change that impacts the world. Real change that impacts the world. So we just talked about with Mr. Jeff how important your voice is and how important your ideas are. And we want to make sure that you guys can facilitate, boys and girls, you can facilitate your ideas and that your finances is not something that holds you back from creating the next big thing that will change the world. And that's what we truly believe. Maya, I see that you raised your hand. You need to put it in the question box for me, okay? Perfect. Um, so our upcoming weekly schedule coming up for the next couple of weeks. We had Mr. Jeff Martin today. Next week is going to be the amazing, incomparable Keisha Johnson. She's going to be on talking about credit for kids, right? Now listen. We are always going to talk about credit on the platform. It will be, some, it will, it will be a reoccurring uh, webinar that we will always have on because credit is so important to financial literacy, okay? So Keisha's gonna be doing a review of credit and that will be next week, uh, Friday, September 4th. Also, September 4th will be the last Kittynomics at 11 a.m. We will be changing the time because schools should be back in session now. Listen, there are kids that join Kittynomics from around the globe. We have kids from America, and we have kids from all over Canada, and we have kids from India and Brazil and the Caribbean. So some of you, some of you have already been back in school. Uh, we're here in Ontario, Canada. So our school's returning uh, different boards, but we're returning on September 8th for our board. Um, so we will be changing the time for Kittynomics and it will now start um, most likely at 5 p.m. So I will send that out and let everybody know the new start time for Kittynomics will be 5 p.m. because you guys should be in school and then give you enough time to come home or if you're online learning um, to eat a snack, do some homework and then jump back on for Kittynomics before dinner. Hopefully that works for everybody. Uh, so that would be, so next week, September 4th, will be the last Kittynomics at 11 a.m. And then following after that, so the September 11th Kittynomics um, will be with the BACD again. And we're going to talking about branding for kids. So we talked about entrepreneurship a couple of weeks ago, right? We talked about entrepreneurship. And so part of entrepreneurship is how to brand your product or your ideas that you guys have been coming up with and doing a business plan, right? Part of that is marketing. So we're going to talk about that um, on September the 11th. And then the following week, we're going to have you, Chi Chi. She's going to be talking to us about wealth from within for kids. So having a positive mindset when it comes to 
handling money and how you feel about that. Because how you feel about money will affect how you handle money. And we want to make sure that you have a positive mindset as to how you feel about money and how and then how to handle it, right? So that will be Friday, September 18th. She's going to be amazing. I cannot wait. We have so many great experts that come on board every single week. So please remember to join us. So last page is let's talk. Listen, we want to hear from you. Our goal is to create tiny financial literacy ambassadors around the globe. And why is that? Because if you're an ambassador, you're going to help change not only your family's point of view, but your friends and your community. Because the more financially literate that you become, and if somebody tells you something, you're like, no, no, no. Well, that's not right, right? Because we learned this on Kittynomics, and this is how it really goes. And then you can start educating other people, your friends, your family, your community at large, to become more financially liter literate themselves. So you become an ambassador for, for financial literacy. So that is our goal. So we want to hear from you. We want to know what other topics that you have that you would like us to talk about on the platform. As you can see with Kittynomics, we talk about everything. We talk about stocks, but we also talk about public speaking. We talk about RESPs, but we also talk about vision boarding. All of these things and skills tie into financial literacy. If you miss any of our past financial literacy webinars, no worries. Please remember to log on to our Kittynomics YouTube channel. Every single webinar is posted there. So if you've missed a video and if you liked a topic that you uh, missed, please go ahead and check our Kittynomics YouTube channel. It will always be posted by 3 p.m. by on um, Friday. So this webinar with Mr. Jeff will be posted today by 3 p.m. today. Um, so you guys and girls can all watch it back. Um, and every other one of our past videos is, is there too. Now, how do you get in contact with us? You can email me at kittynomics101 at gmail.com, but we would really, really appreciate if everybody could like and follow us on Instagram. Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. On Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And yeah, if you can like our videos and like our and like our social media channels, because the more likes that we have, the better that we can build this platform and and uh, and grow it for more kids and parents to watch and share it around the globe. That's what our goal is: is to make sure that we have a global reach, so that we have other kids around the world that will be able to watch Kittynomics and know about Kittynomics, right? So we want to thank everybody for joining. Thank you, Mr. Jeff, with his amazing sons. They did amazing, right? Thank you. Everybody have a phenomenal week. We'll see you next week for credit. So bye. bye. <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing.